Okay, it says here a project is modelled by an activity network shown in figure 3 here. The activities are represented in the, by the arcs. The number in the brackets is the time in days to complete each activity. Each activity requires one worker. The project is to be completed in the shortest possible time. Complete diagram 1 in the answer book to show the early event times and the late event times. So we want to do a forward and a backward pass using this diagram here. Okay, now as we're going forward, remember we're using the top uh, box and we're trying to find the latest, uh, we're trying to find the biggest number that can be along there. As we're going backwards, we're using the bottom box and trying to find the smallest number. So we always start off with the first one and we call this 0, 0. Now, how could I get to A? Well, I could get there in 8. There's no other way to A, so that has to be 8 along the top. How could I get to B? Well, either 7 or I could go 9 via the dummy, via C. So 9's the biggest, so we write 9. What about C? Well, the only way to get to C is this one here, 9. OK, let's think how we could get to here. Well, it's 9 add 5, which is 14, or it's 9 add 7, which is 16. So 16's the biggest one, so we write that in. How could I get here? Well, it's either 8 and 5, which is 13, or 9 and 8, which is 17. 17 is bigger, so we write that. How could I get here? Well, it's either 8 and 9, which is 17, or 17 and 9, which is equal to uh, 26. So 26 is the biggest. How could we get here? Well, there are many ways here, so be careful here. It's 26 and the 5, which is 31, 17 and nothing for the dummy, which is 17, and 16 and 11, which is 27. 31 is the biggest, so we're going to write 31. How do I get here? Well, 26 and 4 is 30, 31 and 6 is 37, that's the biggest. Okay, let's do a backwards pass. We always write 37 here. Okay, how could I get to this one here? Well, the only way back is 6 back, there's no other way to this one here, so this must be also 31. How could I get here? Well, it's either 37 take away 4, which is 33, or 31 take away 5, which is 26. We want the smaller, so we're going to take the 26. How could I get here? Well, it's either 26 take away 9, which is equal to 17, or it's 31 take away nothing, which is 31. We want the smallest, so we're going to take the 17. How could I get here? Well, the only way is 31 take away 11, which is 20. Okay, how could I get here? Well, it's 26 take away 9, which is equal to 17, or 17 take away 5, which is equal to 12. We want the smallest, so we're going to write 12. This one here, how do I get here? Well, it's either 18 take away 8, which is 9, or uh, 20 take away 7, which is 13. And the smallest out of 9 and 13 is clearly 9, so we're going to write 9 in here. Okay? Now, how do we, what about this one here? Well, this one, we could either do 20 take away 5, which is 15, or look at the way the arrows go, 9 take away nothing, which would be 9. So we would write 9 there. Okay, and that would be uh, us done for the forward and backward pass, and we've calculated all the early and late event times. So let's look back up at the question, um, and we have done that there. So let's just say for part A, Let's just say C diagram 1. Okay, what about part B? What does this say? Part B says, calculate the total float for activity H. You must make the numbers you use in your calculation clear. So let's highlight activity H, which is uh, here. And what this is saying, this is saying that H could start at 9, yeah? It's 5 long, so it could go up to 14 but doesn't have to end until 20, okay, before the project's delayed. So in order to work out the float of H, we always do the same thing. It's going to be the late event time here, 20, subtract the length of the activity, 5, subtract the early event time here, which is 9. When we work that out, we get um, 6. Now it's important we look up and see what unit we're dealing with. These are time and days, so we're going to say 6 days, obviously. Okay, now for part C, it asks us, let's have a look up here, 
It says calculate the lower bound for the number of workers to complete the project in the shortest time. Show your calculation. This is a formula you just have to learn. The lower bound is equal to the sum of all lengths of activities divided by length of the critical path. So always state your formula. We're going to work out the sum of the whole thing and the length of the critical path. Now the length of the critical path, we can just read that off our diagram, that's clearly 37. But in order to sum all the activities, we've got to go and sum all these numbers here. So we're going to get the calculator out and we're going to say 8 add 7 add 9. So 8 add 7 add 9. And then we're going to say add 9 add 5 add 8. So add 9 add 5 add 8. Add 7 add 5. So add 7 add 5. And then we're going to add 9 add 11. So add 9 add 11. And then we're going to add 4 and 5 and 6. So 4 add 5 add 6. And we get ourselves 93. So we're going to do 93 divided by 37. So 93 divided by 37 is equal to 2.5. So this is approximately equal to 2.5. Therefore, the lower bound, you can't have two and a half people. So the lower bound must be three workers. So the lower bound is three workers. Okay, and we're done for this bit. Now, Last mark, up to there has been so, so straightforward. The last one's worth four marks and it's quite time consuming. Let's see why. It says, diagram two, which is this diagram uh, here, in the answer booklet shows a partly completed scheduling diagram. Really important you spot here, scheduling. It is not a Gantt chart or cascade chart where you show all activities in the floats. It's where you stick all the activities together to get the minimum number of workers. So we have to complete the scheduling diagram using the minimum number of workers. Now, it's four marks. I find these quite time consuming to do. I don't find them that easy even myself. But the first thing I would do if I was in an exam, I'd get one mark by completing the critical activity. Okay, and then what I'd probably do is go on, complete the paper and come back to this when I've got plenty of time at the end, when, I, when my brain's in a good order and I don't feel under pressure. Okay, so let's do the critical activity. I'm always going to do that because that's the easy one. The critical is this here. There's no float here, you can see. You go up to this. There's no... Um, so you go up here. There's no float here. And there is no float here. And there is no float here, and there is no float here. So let's uh, line those up and do all of those first. So C was first, and then it was F. So we're going to go F from 9 to 17. So F is going to go from 9 to 17, like that. And then I is going to go from 17 to 26. So 17 to 26, like that. And then K is going to go from 26 to 31. So 26 to 30. 1 is K, and then M is 31 to 37, so 31 up to 37 there. Always get that bit done, because that's so easy and straightforward. Don't not do that bit, you probably get one mark for that. So the first thing we've got in our diagram is clearly C, F, I, K, and M. Now we're thinking to ourselves in this question, we should be able to get a lower bound maybe of three, although you can't always achieve that. So we're gonna, we know we can't get it in two, maybe we can get it in three. So let's cross off the ones we've done. We've done this one, we've done the, uh, this one, we've done this one, we've done this one, and we've done this one. And they've even drawn A on for us, this one here. So we have got to try and get uh, B in there, we've got to try and get H in there, We've tried to try and get G in there, E, D, J, and L. If we get those in there, then we will have completed this. So they've started off doing A, and A ends at 8. Now, can anything else start at 8? Well, I look here, and E can start at, at 8. So I'm going to stick E in there. There's other stuff I could stick that starts at 9, but I'm going to stick in E there so that I don't waste any uh, space. So E is 5 long, so it must go from 8 all the way up to 13 like that. And I'm going to write in E in here.
At this point, we could ask ourselves, what can start at 13? So we have done a E now, so I'm going to cross that. What could start at 13? Well, um, we could have uh, D starting at 13. We could have um, G starting at 13 without delaying the project. And we could have H starting at 13 uh, as well. Uh, it's five long. So let's just, why don't we just stick in H there? Let's stick in H um, at this point here. So let's say that H starting at 13 and five long would go up to uh, 18, wouldn't it? We go up to 18 like that, and we're going to call that uh, H is done. So I'm going to call that H there. Now the question is, what can start at 18 without delaying the project? Well, that can't. Um, can that start at 18? No, that would go to 27. So no. Could this start at 18 and and uh, not delay our project? Well, yes, it could, because it's 11 long, and 18 out of 11 is 29. So we could start J there. So we could start J here, and it's 11 long, so it's going to go up to 29. So we're going to put J in there and cross that off. Now we're at 29. Have we got anything that could start at 29 and not delay the project? Well, um, I could stick in L. It could start at 29. It's four long. It would go to 33, and that would be fine. So... It was 29 to 33, and there we go. So that's L. So I'm going to cross that off. Okay, now we've just got to make sure we do the other ones. So let's see uh, what else. Now B, I've got to do B. Now it's seven long. Be careful not to think it's nine long. It's seven long. So I can start it at zero and go over to seven like that. And we could call that B, and we could call it worker three. And that's done. Now, I've got anything that could start at 7, anything here that could start at 7. That can't start till 9. Um, anything else, that could start at 8 and go uh, 9 long. So it's one of these two here. Um, G must happen after B. So I'm, I feel more comfortable putting G next just to make sure it's done. So G happens after B. So I can start G at, at 9, so I'm going to start G at 9, and it's 7 long, so 9, and 7 long goes up to 16, uh, like that, and I could put a G in there, cross that off. Now, can anything start at 16 and not delay the project? Well, that's 9, so that definitely can start then, so I can put D in, it's 9 long, and it would go to 16, add 9, which is equal to 25, so I could go 16, add 9 which is equal to 25, like that, and that's D. Okay, and that's everything all completed now, all crossed off with three workers, and the, just check for dependencies, there's no funny business going on here, this is critical, this can't change, is there anything that should have happened after anything else? L had to happen, if I cross these out, because these are, then maybe you should use a pencil so that you can still read them. Um, so L has to happen after I, K, and D. So L happens after I, uh, K, and D. Uh, no, not after K, sorry, that's my point. It has to happen after I and D, and it does. L happens after I and D, so that's good. M has to happen after J and after K. So M has to happen after K and J, that's fine. And D has to happen after A has happened, that's obviously fine. E has to happen after A has happened, that's fine. F has to happen after B, so F happens after B, that's right. Uh, H happens after C and B, so H happens after C and B, that's fine. Um, and it looks like all the precedences are maintained. So we've got our marks there. I would have left this to the end just to give yourself a bit more time.